Texas is home to some of the oddest, creepiest, and most unusual animals you've ever heard of. It might come as a surprise, but this state is full of creatures you'll hardly see in other places. So, let's have a look at the most amazing ones. This truly beautiful bright blue creature is called the Blue Sea Dragon. Despite such an imposing name, the critter is actually tiny, usually no bigger than a grape. You may find it on the beach or floating beside you in the water. Now, you need to remember one thing. However pretty this little slug may look, never ever touch it. One tourist spotted a few of these pretty dragons on the shore of Mustang Island. He scooped one of the creatures up. He wanted to film it. Luckily, he put it back into the water before it could sting him. Otherwise, it would have ended badly since the blue sea dragon is venomous. Despite their tiny size, their sting can pack a punch. All because of their diet. Their favorite dish is the Portuguese man o' war, a jellyfish that has enough venom to paralyze small fish and crustaceans. The blue dragons first use mucus to neutralize the jellyfish's infamous stinging cells. And then, they steal these cells from the man o' war's tentacles and store and concentrate them within their own tissues. Then, they release these stinging cells on contact, which makes their own sting more powerful, even worse than that of the man o' war itself. These awesome creatures are also extremely sneaky. Even though their appearance is bright, to say the least, they're well-known masters of disguise. You see that vibrant blue coloring is actually on their bellies. And when they float on their backs, they simply blend with the water. As for their backs, they're gray to camouflage these animals on the seafloor. Now, how about a funny fact? A group of tiny dragons floating together is called a blue fleet. And another fact, blue dragons normally lay a string of around 16 eggs. And it takes them three days or so to hatch into larvae. Blue sea dragons rarely make it to the shore. They're soft-bodied, so when the animals finally get through the surf zone and are deposited on the shore, they're already broken apart. And still, watch out! Even in this case, the venom in their bodies doesn't dissipate. But of course, blue sea dragons aren't the only unusual animals inhabiting Texas. Have a look at this nightmarish creature. Poisonous, slimy, and kinda immortal. Meet the hammerhead worm. The worst thing? It might be lurking in your garden while you're watching this video. You can easily recognize this worm by its creepy spade-shaped head. It doesn't look like any other invertebrate you've ever seen. Or any other creature, that is. At first, it was only found in East Texas. But later, researchers spotted these spine-chilling creatures in North, Central, and South Texas. Basically everywhere but the arid areas of West Texas. One of the most terrifying things about this worm might be its length. This creature can grow as long as one foot. Luckily, such giants aren't very common. Most hammerhead worms only reach six inches in length. You can come across two species of these worms in Texas, and both of them will have a dark stripe down the middle. The larger of these two species munches on earthworms, which is actually a big problem. You might know that earthworms play an important role in keeping the soil rich in minerals and overall healthy. If earthworms disappear, plants in such areas won't be getting the nutrients they need. Even for humans and pets, meeting a hammerhead worm isn't the most pleasant experience either. Hammerheads are the only terrestrial invertebrates that secrete a very dangerous neurotoxin, the same as pufferfish produce. Thanks to the sheer size of the human body, touching a hammerhead worm won't hurt you too much, but it may still cause your hand to start tingling or even go numb. It's much more dangerous for pets. There have been cases when dogs ate hammerheads, which left them feeling sick for the whole day. Interestingly, these worms are native to Southeast Asia. But they must have mastered the art of hitchhiking, since in the early 1900s, they were already found in the U.S. Keep in mind that if you want to get rid of a hammerhead worm, which is the best course of action, the worst thing you can do is chop it with a shovel. The thing is, 
flatworms reproduce by ripping themselves in half. So by cutting it, you actually help the populations of the worms, turning one into two. That's the reason why hammerheads are sometimes described as immortal, which is a bit of a stretch since these creatures can't survive in vinegar or salt. Now, even though you're safe from the hammerhead worm in West Texas, it doesn't mean you can't come across another dangerous animal, such as the land lobster from hell. These creatures are also known as vinegaroons, and they're not real crustaceans. They're arachnids. Huh? Who would have guessed? Anyway, these eight-legged critters have a really nasty bite, but it's not the worst thing about them. Land lobsters? Brace yourself. Spray vinegar-like 85% acid from their tails. Mostly they do it to protect themselves, but it still sounds like an unfriendly thing to do, right? A land lobster can also pinch a finger that's gotten too close with its heavy mouth parts. At the base of their abdomens, vinegaroons have long whip-like tails. That's why these arachnids are often called whip scorpions, even though they're neither related to scorpions nor have stingers. Summer rains lure these arachnids out of their burrows in search of food and love. Luckily, experts claim that land lobsters aren't poisonous to humans, but they're very likely to leave a mark with their large pinchers, which they use to capture insects. Vinegaroons can be considered useful since they eat millipedes, crickets, scorpions, and cockroaches. They hunt by sensing the vibrations of their prey with those long front legs of theirs. Since land lobsters prefer to come out after dark, you aren't likely to see one in the daylight. But if you stumble upon one, check it out. If it's a female, it may be carrying her hatchlings on her back. Are you used to picking up hitchhikers on your long commute to work? You might want to hear about the hitchhiker road scam. This trick preys on unsuspecting drivers. The scam typically starts with a person posing as a hitchhiker who flags down a car on the side of the road. They may claim to be stranded or in need of a ride to a nearby town or city. In some cases, the hitchhiker may ask the driver to pull over at a specific location, such as a gas station or convenience store, where they will then disappear with the driver's money or other valuables. This scam can also be done in groups, where a bunch of people will flag down a car and ask for a ride. And once the car is on the move, they will threaten the driver and steal money, valuables, or even the car itself. It's important to be aware of this scam and to always be cautious when picking up hitchhikers. It's best to avoid giving money or other valuables to anyone who claims to need a ride and to never pull over at a location that is not safe or familiar. Hitchhikers are not the only reason why you might get into trouble on the road. A slice of cheese isn't something you'd expect to find on your parked car, am I right? Well, it might indicate something quite dangerous. One woman told the story of such an experience online, thinking it was just a prank made by some neighborhood youngster. She decided to call a friend and ask for help with cleaning the car up. But once the two ladies started rubbing off the melted cheese from her windshield, they saw something strange nearby. She remembered seeing a white van arriving. In it were a bunch of men suspiciously staring at them. She wasn't alone, so she decided it was safe enough to finish cleaning up the car, even though they didn't feel comfortable being stared at. It took them almost an hour to scrape off the cheese that had melted under the heat. She did wonder, though, if this wasn't a tactic to rob a person. That's because most people would be so focused on cleaning up the mess on their car they'd be distracted from keeping an eye on the thing they left in the car, like bags, wallets, or even recent shopping items. Or worse, what if it was a kidnapping strategy? That sticky cheese would keep a person really concentrated on fixing the car, so they wouldn't be able to see suspicious people coming at them in due course. The key takeaway from this story, if you ever see a piece of cheese on your car, might as well leave it as it is as long as it's not blocking your view and it doesn't really affect your driving. Your safest bet is to just clean it at home or take it to the nearest car wash. They'll know the best way to clean up the vehicle without ruining the paint. Sure, the piece of cheese on a car scam might just be a coincidence, but some scams out there are more legitimate. 
with this next one being quite the unusual method when it comes to snatching away other people's cars. If you notice a t-shirt or a hoodie on your windshield, or even wrapped between your wiper blades, don't be so quick to take it away. Again, it can be placed there on purpose to distract you while your car gets taken away. Drive away as quickly as possible if you can, and get to a safe location that's well lit and filled with many people. There you can remove whatever object you have on the car without any risks. Some people have even found money under their wiper blades. It's easy to imagine that those who left it there probably had the same intention in mind. There are methods to help when it comes to decreasing your odds of getting your car snatched away. Keep your tires turned to the curb whenever you park it. If your car wheels are in that position, thieves are less likely to be able to move around with the vehicle. They'll see that your car requires more time and energy to be moved, so it'll become less of a target. Sadly, scams on the road are quite common, and one of the most widespread types is the infamous tow truck scam. This scam involves leaving oil, metal nails, or glass shards on the road and waiting for drivers to fall into the trap. If your car gets damaged in such a situation, the scammers will suddenly appear out of nowhere and offer to provide towing service at extremely high prices. They'll try to pressure you into using their services because most of the time, they place these traps in strategic locations. They make sure people get stranded where there's low visibility and no gas station in sight where you can assess the damage done to your car. In a situation where you have no other option but to give consent for them to tow your car, they'll also take advantage of the situation and take it to workshops unapproved by your insurance company. This means you'll have to pay even more money to get your car back. If you've been a driver for long enough, you know that the driver who rear-ends another vehicle is always at fault. That's because you should always keep a comfortable distance from the car in front of you, so you can safely stop the car in case of an emergency. Some scammers will take advantage of this by repeatedly braking suddenly, causing you to hit them. This dangerous tactic is used to get money for supposed damages and even for make-believe medical expenses. To avoid falling victim to this scam, you should reduce your speed and keep a safe distance, especially from suspicious vehicles or chaotic drivers. If a scammer continues to bother you in traffic, the best course of action is to drive to the nearest police station and report them. Picture this. You're driving on the road, and suddenly a motorcyclist gets your attention and points out that your wheels are smoking. You quickly pull over to the side of the road. The motorcyclist then offers to help by calling a mechanic to check your wheels. Surprisingly, the mechanic gets there really fast, but proceeds to disable your braking system while inspecting the cause of the smoke. He then asks you to test your brakes, which of course won't be working since he's already disabled them. Pretending to be helpful, he offers to fix your brakes for you, but will charge an enormous price for it. Moral of the story, stick to your trusted mechanic or towing company. You never know who you'll find on the road. Some scams aren't even that. They're just urban legends. Many people claim to have seen the wrong way man on the roads. One version of this story mentions a man stuck driving down one-way streets in the opposite direction, causing chaos and confusion as other drivers try to avoid him. The man is said to be crazed and dangerous, with a wild look in his eyes and a penchant for reckless driving. Other stories say he's not even driving, but that once you've seen this mysterious person on the side of the road while driving home, you should turn around to keep from going back to your house for at least a week. That is, if you don't want anything bad to happen. There are countless stories of near misses and close calls with this mysterious figure. Some even say that they've been hit by the man and that they suffered serious injuries as a result. Despite the many sightings and stories, there's no concrete evidence to suggest that the wrong way man actually exists. Many experts believe that the legend is simply a cautionary tale meant to remind people to be aware of their surroundings and to drive safely. However, the legend persists and continues to be passed down through generations, making it one of the most enduring urban myths of all time. 
In the heart of a dense forest, a person embarks on a forest hike, delving into the hidden depths of nature's playground. But this isn't your ordinary stroll through the trees. It takes a turn towards an eerie and spine-chilling discovery. Our protagonist, with a twinkle of curiosity in his eyes, discovers a burrow hiding in the shadows. Curiosity outweighs mm -hmm. fear, and our explorer comes up closer. It's not some random burrow. This one belongs to a fox. So what if it's the wrong move, and they should just run away? In the joyful season of spring, when nature comes alive with vibrant energy, foxes engage in their intricate dance of life. It's during this time that foxes seek solace in their underground sanctuaries. Throughout the rest of the year, when the world around them flourishes, foxes prefer to bask in the sun, finding comfort above ground, except when the weather takes a turn for the worse. It's in the most inclement conditions that they seek refuge in their burrows, shielding themselves from the elements. These burrows, known as fox earths, typically consist of only a few entrances, occasionally covered with scattered soil and debris. During winter months, industrious foxes diligently dig additional burrows in anticipation of the forthcoming spring. Sometimes, among the remnants of their subterranean journeys, lie the remains of fallen foxes, a testament to the cycle of life within these intricate underground networks. If one were to explore the vicinity of a fox earth, one would notice fresh traces of food remaining outside the burrows during the months of April to June. It's during this period, when playful fox cubs grace the earth with their presence, that remnants of their feasts can be found, a delightful sign of life unfolding. So what do these earths look like? After all, there are other animals with dens in the forest too. Now let's get to the heart of the matter. Fox dens, the elusive abodes of these mischievous beings, tend to be located in areas abundant in lush greenery. You might find these creatures hiding beneath the sheltering branches of a tree or seeking refuge beneath imposing rocks. If you stumble upon a cozy little hole that appears tailor-made for a fox, and you catch a whiff of that unmistakable aroma accompanied by other intriguing clues like scattered bones, you've likely discovered a fox den. Alas, my curious friend, there's no foolproof recipe for where these sly foxes choose to build their dens. They possess an uncanny ability to adapt to diverse environments, be it open grasslands, dense forests, or even the unforgiving tundra. Picture this, a fox's den consists of a minimum of four to five sections. We have the grand entrance, the ever important ramp, the main den itself, and a secret room that doubles as a food stash. Depending on the size of the pack, there might be additional rooms to accommodate the whole gang of foxes. Mm -hmm. Now imagine the grand opening to a fox's den. The entrance and the ramp form a corridor leading about three to eight feet deep into the earth, connecting the outer world with the cozy haven within. Ah, but there's more. Foxes, being savvy planners, stockpile their foraged treasures in their dens. Yes, they have their own food caches where they hide all their scrumptious finds. The number of rooms within the den may vary, adapting to the size of the pack as these crafty creatures ensure there's enough space for giving birth and raising their adorable offspring. They might even dig extra tunnels and create additional entrances just to keep things interesting. Now let's talk about culinary affairs. Foxes are savvy gourmands who store food in large quantities, ready to weather the winter and the mating season. However, they're not extravagant hoarders. They usually stash away just enough to last them a few days, considering they don't dine on fresh prey every single day. Berries and fruits often grace their storage chambers, while any delectable meat takes center stage in their culinary adventures. Curious about the proximity of fox dens to one another? Well, if the land is bountiful with abundant food and fresh water, 
you might stumble upon two or three fox dens within a 10 square mile radius. But if resources are scarce, oh, you might have to expand your search to cover a sprawling 20 square miles to find just one den. But the saga doesn't end there. Foxes, true to their resourceful nature, often have multiple dens. They maintain the primary den, mm -hmm. often known as the natal den, which holds sentimental value. Additionally, they keep a backup den for some unpredictable circumstances. And let's not forget their knack for claiming abandoned or borrowed dens as their own. Such clever tricksters, mm -hmm. aren't they? Now, let's talk about these marvelous creatures themselves. Foxes come in a delightful array of species, sizes, and variations scattered all across our planet. But the star of the show is the red fox, found on every continent except frosty Antarctica. While most foxes prefer the tranquility of rural landscapes, don't be surprised if they venture into the realms of urban and suburban dwellings, where their path might cross with humans. Ah, the encounters between a fox and a human. A tale of two extremes. Some kind souls attempt to win over these animals, offering them tidbits and coaxing them into their palms. On the other hand, there are those who tremble at the mere thought of a fox, fearing their crafty and ferocious nature. Now picture this scenario. What if a fox approaches you or launches an attack? Typically, foxes pose no threat to humans and harbor no ill intentions. They prefer to feast upon small mammals or livestock, reserving their aggression for hunting or self-defense. Yet, there have been reported cases of foxes crossing paths with humans, including incidents. Therefore, knowing what steps to take if a fox approaches or pounces on you is crucial. Foxes can indeed be domesticated, yet they remain wild at heart, and their actions can be wildly unpredictable. They might momentarily embrace their tamed side, only to snap back into their untamed instincts when feeling cornered, threatened, hungry, or simply scared. Naturally, foxes view us humans as potential threats, and it's in our best interest to reciprocate their cautious approach. Never attempt to approach a fox, even if it appears docile and friendly, as its temperament can shift within seconds, catching you off guard. Avoid sudden movements and resist the urge to inch closer, as doing so might agitate or frighten our fox friend. In most cases, when a fox spots a human nearby, it will swiftly scamper away or seek refuge in hiding. However, should you find yourself locked in a standoff with a fox, the best course of action is to take a step back and allow it the space it craves. Should a fox persist in its approach, or if you encounter several foxes nearby, my dear friend, give them a wide berth and allow them their space. Refrain from approaching or attempting to feed them, especially by hand. Let them carry on with their foxy affairs while you observe them from a distance. In a situation where a fox becomes trapped, such as finding its way into a room, I implore you to remain calm. Avoid raising your voice or causing unnecessary commotion, as it may provoke the fox to attack. Instead, remain silent, keep a safe distance from the creature, and provide it with an escape route. Ensure the doors and windows remain unobstructed, granting the fox the freedom it seeks. In due time, it will make its swift exit. However, if fortune frowns upon you and you find yourself in the unfortunate circumstance of a fox attack, remember to stay composed. Refrain from unleashing your pets or pursuing the fox. Just allow it to retreat on its own accord. If the fox persists and refuses to back down, a simple round of applause or a few claps might startle it away. Now you can enjoy the forest. 